thank you very much. It was a great honor for me. And I consider this as a great privilege for me to be here in your midst today. Chairperson of today's convocation, Dr. Pesey, my friend and a very enterprising, young, dynamic leader of our Nagas, Mr. Lauren, who is not only the director, but he is also the chairman of NIDC. He holds a lot of colors. Wherever he goes, you know, he shines. And we are so happy. <clears throat> Principal of Tetsuo College, of faculties, and uh, the parents of today's uh, patch of 2024, and especially my dear students of batch 2024. How honored I am to be here with you in our midst. When I think about standing before you, I feel elated to know that you are venturing into a land, into the world, where there's a lot of opportunities. Today, as you celebrate a very special time, particularly the transition of your life, and as you embark on the kind of opportunities that awaits you, the emerging economies, economies of uh, India, I think you should be full-heartedly going into that and then accepting the challenges. I see young graduating students with all the smiles in your, in your face. And I think, you know, you go out, all the world out, and start conquering it. Uh, while I was just tracing this, I was just asking my friends whether it will fit my size. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, you know, they said, Almost all of us are same, and, and I come here, and I take the privilege of being here today. Before I start, I would like to first remember the founder, the founder of this great college, the vision that he had, and, and the way that he must have struggled, he must have, you know, he must have sacrificed himself. And he had kept a legacy. And that was inherited by none other than Mr. Lauren, who is sitting here today. We are going to do something for that. And I would like to also, you know, especially thank the faculties of Tetsuo College, who had done so much for the graduating students here today. You are responsible in creating that carbon to diamond, the diamond who are sitting over here. And what I would like to request all of you today is that let's give a big round of applause to this, to this great people. I would like to again ask you to give a big hand, especially to the parents sitting over here. Their, their, their sacrifices that we had for all of you because of their sacrifices, because of their aspirations, because of the hope that they had, we are all sitting over here. Do you know that my children, my son, my daughter, is going to conquer the world tomorrow? And I think, you know, it's very befitting for us to give that uh, a big round of applause. Shall we do it once again? We had been talking about faculty. We had been talking about, uh, you know, founders. And now, I would like to have a small time to take a little bit of exercises for our young students over here. And what I would like to ask you is that we are going to, we are going to have a, a, a small paragraph, which you know, I, would, I would rather request 
our friend over here, uh, just the, the media person, just kindly display that. We will have a paragraph over here. I wanted to ask you something here. And I'll tell you to do something. You need to read this. Can you see this? You need to read this and find out how many Fs, Fs, Fs are here. I'll give you 20 seconds, and the moment you finally got it, I want you to please stand up, okay? Is it okay? Yes, starting now. Yes, can you please stand up? Our graduating students, will you please stand up? All of you. Just one work. Those of you who have seen here F with three and below, please sit down with F in this whole paragraph, just find out how many Fs are there. And those of you who sees less than three, three and less, please sit down. Less, please sit down. Less than four, please sit down. Less than five, Please sit down. And less than six, please sit down. There is only six, okay? Thank you very much. The same word, the same paragraph, I think that's all. The same word, the same paragraph, you all have seen this. Some it's in three, some it's in four, some it's in five, and yes, there are six over here. You are going to face this situation. Tomorrow you walk out from this college, you are going to have different opportunities. You are going to have different challenges, but yes, you have to face all this. It's you, it's your battle, okay? It's, it's your battle alone. Please fight it and be a blessing for our society. I'll be talking much about our future. And I'm sorry, I think, you know, like uh, in the program, since the time has not been given, I think I'll have my liberty to use the time, you know, whatever, whatever time I would like to use. And yes, I would like to also inform you that I have asked a friend of mine from Business Association of Nagas, Mr. Akam, to accompany me. My son has accompanied me. And, and, and for that matter, you know, if you happen not to applaud me, I told them that you should applaud me, okay? So, so, so if you happen not to applaud me, they will be doing that applause, you know, for me. So yes, uh, I will be concentrating on the, on the future, but when we have to concentrate on the future, until and unless we see the context of our past, I think you know, we will not be able to arrive there. So what I'd like to tell our students over here today is that change. There's one word, change, which is very, very important for us. The change is what we call a principle of our life. And what do you mean by that? There's going to be a change even if it's a living things, and there's also going to be change even if it's a non-living things. So everything will change. The changes that has come about three, four hundred years back, there's a lot of changes. We are going to come across changes tomorrow. We are going to come across changes day after tomorrow. We are going to ch come across changes in your life. So keep this in mind. You have to 
pass these changes in your life, you have to embrace that particular changes. And when we talk about that, when we talk about the past, I think let us just go back to about 300, 305 years back. 1719, that was a time uh, uh, in, in, a, in Delhi at Kurukul, they were having this kind of convocation. And you know, during that time, of course, I think that was during um, non-colonization, they would have talked about the kind of economy that was there in India then. It was shining. And for your kind information, the economy then in India, the kind of uh, the, the global trade that was happening then in India was about one fourth of the total global trade which was happening. It's about 25%. Go back one century back. There was an emissary from Great Britain, uh, Thomas Rai, Roy, who had come to India and he was studying India. And he had come to India to create the trade between India and England. And that was a time when he had studied about it, came to, came to Delhi. He was an ambassador in Mukul, uh, uh, Mukul Empire. And he said, uh, he wrote back to his country saying that there's nothing we can give to this country. Rather, we have to learn so many things from them. That is in 1615 to 1619. That was a time when India was growing and not just growing, but it was happening, the economy, the social. And it was a learning country. We had about 25% of the global trade. Fast forward that to 2017 to 2019, 200 years after that, what happened to India? You know one thing, if you are not careful, if you are not careful, there are going to be people who will just come and then bulldoze us. That's what exactly happened. In 2019, when the World War first ended, the economy of India was down to just 4% of the global economy. Just 4%. Down from 24-25% to just 4%. Fast forward that to our independence, 1947. We hardly had any improvement. We had our economy at about 4.2% of our total global trade. Until today, after 77 years, when we have to see that, it's just below 5% of the total global trade. It's about 4.5%. But yes, there's a good news for all of us. Those are all past. We have a great future in our hand today. And what is the future? In the next 2035, 2035, we expect to have our economy running at $10 trillion. What is, our, what is our economy today? Our economy is about $3.9 trillion. And in another 10 years time, we expect to run at $10 trillion. We are the fifth, we are the fifth largest economy in the world. And by that time, we will be surpassing Germany, we'll be surpassing Japan, and hopefully, I think we will be somewhere on the third. 
and 50 years down the line, in 2075, and if we are all alive, and if we happen to cross bat, you please mark one word. By 2075, we will be weighing for the first or the second place of our, uh, of our, of our economy in the world. We'll, we are, we'll be weighing for that first and second position. Today, uh, uh, China is there in the second position. Their, their, their economy is uh, you know, falling down. Their GDP growth uh, is, is falling down. Your, 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 your America is, is moving down by around 1 to 2%. One to 2 and of course, as far as Germany is concerned, it is falling down by 0.5 to 1%. So hopefully, even though we don't reach that 25% of the market share of that particular global trade, we expect to have at least double digit um, uh, the, the trade in the global market. And that is where you are going in. 300 years back, we had seen, you had seen that great uh, economy. The graph has just come down. And now it's just going up. You are there when it's going up. It's a great opportunity for you all. You take care of that. Now, until and unless I study my history, until and unless we study our own history, I think, you know, we will, we will destroy our future. So one thing which I'd like to remind you is that as far as Nagas are concerned, in 1872, we got our first missionary, American missionary, and, and started our Christianity. Only after around 52 years, 52 years, in 1924, in 1924, I think, you know, exactly just 100 years back, there was one gentleman who was the first graduate of Nagas in 1924, the first graduate. And in 1959, the first college, that is Fadali College in Mokokchong was set up. So when we compare ourselves with that economy, with that culture, which was prevailing in India just 300 years back, 400 years back, I'm telling you, we, our pace is very fast. Till 1960, we were into head hunting. In 1960, government of India has given a ban on head hunting. And if you consider the small period of years, I think we had really, really moved fast. And today when we see our youngsters all over the world, they are doing great job. They are leading in many of the fields. And when your elders are doing that, why can't you do that? You can surely do that, okay? So be courageous, be confident about yourself, and then you move ahead. Um, since we have about six disciplines here today, I might not be able to give you, you know, one size fits all, you know, advices to everybody, but I will try to accommodate, you know, all of you in the process of my speech. Um, when we talk about science, let us learn this. Science creates technology, okay? Science creates technology. And technology creates commerce. And commerce creates economy, and uh, economy creates politics. So at least in some way or the other, I think we are, we, we are being attached to this growth, we are attached to this particular creation. But in this creations, there are two ways, there are two paths. The first path is the wealth creation, okay? And the second path is wealth distribution. 150 years back, when we received Christianity, we were taught 
only how to share wealth, and we were never taught how to create wealth. Creation of wealth is very important. How do you, how do you distribute wealth when we don't create wealth? Nagas have a very wrong conception about wealth. Nagas have a very wrong conception about money. We should stop that. We have, a, we have a notion that money is sin. We have a notion that you know creating wealth is not the right way. But you youngsters here today, you have to break that notion. You need to tell them, you need to prove it to them, saying that, look, Wealth creation, and wealth creation is nothing but making money. Wealth creation is moral. Wealth creation is dignified, and wealth creation is upright. The moment our people know this, I think, you know, I think we can do something great, okay? So that is what you have to prove. You need to prove that to our people. So that is where we had stayed for very long. We were taught only about sharing. We were never taught about creation. And that's the only reason why people like us, we are so-called the first generation entrepreneur. And when we started our businesses, we had all the objection from the parents, from the family members. We had to fight with all the odds. I said, no, this is my decision. This is my career. Yes, you must have taken care of me, but I think I'll have to make my decision for the career. I should contribute at least something for our society. And that's how you know, I started off my businesses. And when we talk about, when we talk about creations, uh, in, in some, some years, I think, you know, um, Vipro, Vipro company, uh, you know Vipro company? Azim Premji is a chairman and managing, is a chairman of this great company. And at one point of time, this company was adjudged, Azim was adjudged as one of the richest, the third richest man in India. And, and uh, there, was a, uh, there was an interview that had happened and one young lady, she came and said, isn't it obscene to have such kind of a great wealth? And you know what he answered? He answered, sorry, in this country, if I don't create wealth, who will distribute the wealth? How will I distribute the wealth? Poverty? And that is what exactly is happening here today. We don't create wealth and we see so a lot of poverty here today. We need to create that wealth in order to make our society better. Our, we need to bring up our society. That's what we should be doing, my dear young ladies and gentlemen. We need to create wealth. We need to chart our own ways. You cannot depend on your parents. You cannot depend on anybody. Yes, you take the advices from them, but it's you and you alone who has to chart your own ways. In, 20, uh, in, in 20, 24, 25, that period, I think many of you would have been somewhere around one, two years old. Of course, we business, started our business uh, somewhere in the 1990s where you were not born then. And 2004, 2005, uh, I was calling a lot of companies from outside to come and make investment in telecom infrastructure. And there was a time when we were, we were just using a very slow internet, okay? Uh, just a dial-up connection. If I, have to, if I have to keep connected to, to the net, I have to dial up a number, and from that, you know, that connection was given. And we were working at around 8 kbps, 16 kbps, 30, 24 kbps. That's a very, 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 very slow speed we were working. Today, you will not even imagine, okay? Today, we are talking about MPPS. But then, so I said, look, 
we needed to do something on this. And we needed to create an infrastructure in this area. Nobody was interested. So I said, well, I have to make my own course. If they are not interested, we will lay the infrastructure, optical fiber infrastructure. And by the time we finish this, these other people, these companies will come and make use of our infrastructure. And rightly so, you know, after, after struggling for one, two years, laying optical fiber, laying optical fiber, sometimes early in the morning, you know, you go with all the jumble, with all the things, lay optical fiber. And in 2006, our first client was Aircell Company. Aircell, sorry, it's not no more here today. Then Airtel came, Reliance came, you know, because these big companies, they'll just come and test the water first. They will not do like us because we are people of the soil. We have to create our state. We can't depend on others. People will just come to do business of it. They will just earn and then go back. But people like us are going to stay back, okay? People are about. So, with all those things that has been done, my first client was Aircell, then Airtel, Reliances, and even at one point of time, PSNL was, was using my network as a retardant bot. And I started this business even without seeing what optical fiber is. That's the risk which we have been taking so far. Okay? So that is what we did. And when you really are passionate to do this, that's the power of passion. You can really do it. So with that infrastructure which we have, we started off with the, you know, internet services. And I'm telling you, we are the first, we are the first in our state to have come out with FTTH, fiber to home, fiber to the home technology. So that was, a, that was those days where we were just laying optical fiber, optical fiber. We are just reaching the optical fiber, deal the customers, please. And today we are surviving, and I said, I, I told my old 100, you know, uh, we, have, uh, we have different, you know, um, uh, verticals of, of different companies. So in my Symbiose Creations private liberal company, um, o over 130, 40 uh, employees, I've been telling them, look, we are here today only because of a service. And the moment, the moment, we compromise on this, we are out from the market. Because there's going to be disruptions in the market. And yes, indeed, in 2019, 20, there had been a lot of disruptions that has come in. There were companies who were just coming and giving free buys, freebies, giving free. But we were prepared then, and that's how I think, you know, with all your, with all your support, we are here today standing strong. I wanted to share some lessons with you. And that lesson is that, my dear young friends, uh, when we talk about, when you go out from here, you'll be talking about, I would like to create something, okay? I would like to create something. And you will decide, what is it that I'm gonna create? Where should I create this? And why? Why should I create this? And that why, if you can ask that with all the passion in your life, and when you think about it, when, when it gives you an answer saying that, look, this is going to give a better place for us to live in, go in for that, okay? Should go in for that, you will succeed. As far as uh, uh, the people who will always ask, how do I run my life? Second, how do I run my life? And there's a very, uh, very important and, and very powerful saying of Afrigan, which says, if you want to walk fast, you walk alone. If you want to walk far, you walk together. None of us are as smart as all of us we are. 
So what you have to do is that by the time you go out from here, meet your friends, meet your mentors, meet, meet your people around, do things together. Then you'll be able to go far. As far as our Nagas are concerned, I'm telling you this, this is my experiences. Nagas, we tend to just hold on to that company or firm where we wanted to do, even though it dies or even though it survives, I will just hold on to that and then I will, I will, I will die. That is the mentality which we have. We need to work out, we need to work together. This is very important for all of us. You will fail many times, okay? Not once, not twice, not thrice, but many, many times. But don't be discouraged. That is nothing but that's a, a lesson for all of us. It's going to be a great lesson for all of you. Uh, as uh, Winston Churchill, when he was asked, what is the secret? What is the secret of you being able to lead and have a great victory with all the allied forces, with, with, you know, with, all those, uh, with, with all those difficulties? He said a very powerful word, very short, but very powerful. He said, never, never, never give up. That is, that is the third thing which I would like to share with you. And I know there are, there are many, many other people in different disciplines, but this I would like to you know, stress particularly for our business, our, our, our aspiring entrepreneurs. I'll tell you, if you start any businesses, keep a, keep a very close eye on your money, okay? Keep a very close eye on your money. Money is like, uh, uh, an oxygen for life. It's like an oxygen for life. Of course, of course, oxygen is not the purpose for our life, but without oxygen, you will not be able to survive more than three minutes. So that's how, how important it is. So take care of that. Instead of you rather just saying, okay, you let one month end, and after that, okay, let me just check my balance, let me just check my profit and loss account. No. If you do that, it is just going to be just a post-mortem, okay? You will not be able to do anything. But on a daily basis, if you say, if you check your profit and loss account on a daily basis, then it's a diagnostic tools where you can make changes, where you can make corrections. So take care of that. My friends, you are going to make millions and we are going to make billions tomorrow. Selected ones, few ones. God has done, uh, God has chosen you and God has chosen all of us with, with our own limitations. He has put you in various places, okay? Out of so many people, out of, uh, out of you, are, you are one in, you are one in uh, nearly about 8 billion population in the world. But you are the chosen one. And those who earns that kind of money, what are you going to do that, with that money? Please understand that with that responsibility, with wealth that has been given to you, you had also been given the responsibility to take care of those needy ones. This is very important. The wealth are not yours, I'm telling you. It's not us. It doesn't belong to us. Yes, as far as uh, we human beings are concerned, we consume about uh, nearly about 2,200 uh, calories to 2,500 calories in our life. Okay, the, the ladies might be consuming less than that. That's all. That's the only consumption that we have. The rest of the wealth, we can't consume it. That, we have to give it back to the society. And one, once when God has given you that responsibility for you to take care of this, we are being given that responsibility of being just a stewardship. Be a good stewardship. A good caretaker. Because... Because the wealth that you have acquired today 
had belonged to somebody else yesterday and will belong to somebody else tomorrow. Okay? So when you have that, take care of that. See you do that. Make use of that for our society. Build our nation. Build our state. That is what all of us should do. Okay? I would like to, uh, when, I, when I go back from here, uh, maybe whatever thing that I'm saying, you might just forget in another 24 hours. That's okay. We do that. Okay? But I, I wanted you to keep some few things in mind. I think I just wanted you to take some pledge, uh, uh, you know, especially for three, for three things. When we see a country, the country is not respected when the economy is bad. Please mark my word. When our economy is bad, no country is going to respect us. And in order for us to let other people respect us, what is it we need to do? We need to create values. Okay? And those creation of values will be done by you. Great, make companies, great companies, create all the businesses. Wherever you go, create something, create some values. And that is when we are going to make that, we are going to see that changes. Creating value is very important. So three things I would like to tell you. Uh, don't, don't work just for consuming values, okay? But be the one who creates values. That's one. Don't go on seeking for jobs. Create jobs. And the last but very important one, don't be a followers. Be a leader. Please don't forget this. I might say so many things, but you know, this is these are very important things in your that is going to be important in our life. We had been given choices, okay? We had been God when God made us, He had given us choices. Choose as by our will. That's the reason when in our Bible, when God made created Adam and Eve, and when He said, you can take any fruits from any of the trees except this tree. Don't take it from them. That was his command. But when Eve was tested, God did not come and tell Eve that, no, 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 don't take this. He just left it for Eve to make its own decision. That's, that's the power of choices which we have. We can choose the right thing. We can choose the right, wrong path. But God will not tell you, do this, do that. He has given us everything. It's you and me who has to make the final choices. So I have some few choices for you, okay? And that is, you know, choose learning, okay? Choose learning over speaking. I think we see a lot of people, you know, who, like me, who keeps on speaking a lot many things. But uh, what has been said? Choose learning over speaking. Choose loyalty over backstabbing our friends. This is very important. You are going to come across because I'm sharing this even with my own experiences, okay? So, uh, choose. Choose loyalty. Choose good over bad. Choose generosity over greed. Okay? Choose generosity over greed. Choose gratitude over attitude. There are people whom we see, you know, with a lot of attitude, they will just move around. Choose. Choose. Gratitude. Choose truth. That is very important for us. Choose truth to speak out. And choose discipline. 
And I just wanted to end my thing, I just wanted to say this, because this befits all of us, discipline. You know, um, in, in Jewish community, because the financial, financial discipline is very important, not only for the commerce students, not only for, 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 for entrepreneurs, it's, it's so important for all of us. And I'm going to give you this. In Jewish community, they observe a very strong financial principle, and that principle is they have five jars, okay? Five jars. The first jar, they are being advised, they are being taught, even from the very, very small kid, they are being advised in tithes. Ten person, it's for tithes. Ten person, another ten person is for giving. Another ten person is for investment. Okay? Investment. And another 20 person is for savings, savings. M my dear friends, I think you, you have to give this very seriously. And remaining 50 person, you spent wherever you wanted to do it. That is how they have been built up, and that's the reason, in spite of the fact that they are just one person of the total population of this world, they control 20, they are 25 percent of billionaires in the world. Isn't it great? That is how that is how they build their financial foundations. So my dear friends, as you walk out from this great auditorium, have faith in yourself. Go out with pride, okay? You should go out with pride. Go out with all the, the, the expectation, with all the, with all the things that the world has to give it to you. Go out with all the hope, with the sense that there's so much opportunities for you. You should do that. Yes, just go out and live your dream. Just go out and live your dream. Enjoy life when you are doing all these things and have built, create a happy world around you. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so, I'm so grateful for, for, for being here today and I'm so happy that I could share at least whatever ex small experiences that I had earlier and I love to see all of you shining tomorrow. Thank you very much.